All right, hey everyone, we're back. We're doing some uh, advanced TIG techniques today. We're doing overhead. Uh, in preparation for Everlast opening up our school, we wanted to start concentrating on some more advanced techniques, some tips and tricks, um, kind of prepping you guys for what we're gonna teach at our school. So today, overhead, let's go over check out the machine, get our settings down. So we're running the new Typhoon 230. Again, nothing crazy on the settings, 171 amps. Advanced square wave, 161 hertz, 35% balance. Now on the previous videos, we had shown you some, some techniques to bias your tungsten or your filler rod addition running vertical and horizontal. All that's out the window with overhead. Um, the best way to think about overhead TIG is it's like running flat, but it's upside down. So you don't, you know, you're still watching your tungsten angle and your torch angle and feeding your filler rod right down the center of the joint but it's not like running overhead MIG or overhead stick where your settings vary quite a bit and your technique varies. For me personally, running overhead TIG is the easiest second only to running flat. Vertical and horizontal for me are harder than running overhead. The main thing is just making sure you're in a position where you're comfortable and you can feed your filler rod and have a good view of your, of your puddle. Other than that, it's like running flat. So, you come into this a lot. I see overhead a lot when you're doing like boat repairs. That's pretty much all you're running on a boat is running overhead. Unless something's cracked up on top of the deck, usually it's all like hull repairs. So your overhead, you know, or you're slightly, you know, 15, 20 degrees down from overhead, but it's still pretty much above you. That's where this really comes into play. And I see a lot of guys get stressed out. Oh, it's overhead. It's going to be so much harder. Really, it's, it's not that bad, especially if you've run a lot of vertical and a lot of horizontal. Uh, you get on some overhead, you're like, oh yeah, a little break. So we're going to run a couple passes, um, show you guys some things to look out for. I'll run a little bit hot and show you what to look for as the puddle starts to kind of drip down on you. But when you're running overhead, really try to think about it as I'm running flat. It's just in a little bit different position. All right, so on this first run, I was kind of rolling my tungsten side to side to show my proper or improper uh, tungsten angle. And then ended up biasing my tungsten over to one plate. And so on the back side, my penetration is, you know, real inconsistent, lack of fusion. It kind of jumps between plates. And then as I bias that one plate, it kind of got over and I just got penetration on this one side. So that's, you know, typical flat torch angle control, that's what you're looking for, is to run right down the center and not trying to bias one side or the other or roll your torch to one side or the other. So you can see my penetration kind of jumped around, inconsistent, and then started rolling over to this one side once it started the keyhole. So the only thing that's a little more difficult about overhead than flat is that your, your limit of Oh no, I'm too hot is just a little more narrow with overhead because all your heat's rising up. So when it starts to keyhole, you have to really get on adding filler rod to it or your puddle's gonna start sagging out, which this is super high and it starts kind of sucking back. And then once it blows out, you're pretty much done. You're gonna have to stop, let it cool off before you can start trying to fill that hole in. So you can see we started this second run about right here. We started getting hotter, getting hotter. Right here is pretty good. And then I stopped adding filler rod. It started to fall out on me. And that's when, uh, that's when it all went bad. So this top run, really nice, smooth bead. It's a little bit hot, but I was, probably could have added a little bit more filler rod and backed off on the amps a tiny bit and get a little more definition, but Good toe line, nice, smooth, consistent bead. It's a little, you know, it's a little undefined. That's typically what I'll get with overhead is I won't get as much definition, but a nice solid run there. So here we got our, our backside of that last run. See, nice, even penetration the whole way up. You know, it's not biased to one side of the plate. It's a good, thick reinforcement. Um, and it, like I said, it's like running flat just in a different position. So nice, even balanced tungsten angle, 
you know, not leaning your torch to one side or bias into one plate, just right up the center. Fill a rod right down the center on that front edge, watching it keyhole open and then jamming a little more fill a rod than you would on flat. But other than that, it's pretty much like running flat. So yeah, that's a nice little overhead demo. Like I said in the beginning, it's, it's like running flat, just in a different position, which sounds like an oxymoron, but once you do it a couple times, you start learning that, yeah, it's just like running flat as far as your torch angle and technique. You're just watching that keyhole and jamming a little more filler rod into it. But if you guys get in some weird out of position stuff, you have some questions, just drop them in the comments. I check these videos pretty regularly. I'm on the, uh, the Everlast YouTube account, so I try to keep up with everything. Just hit us up and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. I'm Jesse McCollum with Everlast Weld. Just remember, weld mean, weld green.